So the first things first, I'm going to be looking at his hand shape and fingers and how this can show us what sort of a person he was. Now, in a, in a hand print, uh, the, the hands kind of, they are sort of reversed. It's a negative image. So we're looking at the right here, uh, right hand here on the, on the right. And you notice the palm shape itself. It's very low down. The heel of Luna here is very low down. And it shows us someone who is a very sort of triangular appearance of the palm. The fingers themselves are very splayed out. The thumb itself looks very stiff. Uh, it's very enlarged as well. Um, you know, Luna here on, on the left, it's, it's, it's very well developed here. It's very strong and, and there's a great strength of Mercury. Notice how the Mercury finger here is darker and Luna as well is darker. This, this appears as though uh, he sort of was pressing down on the paper harder on that side of, of the hand and perhaps he was, but it, it is also an indication that uh, this part of the palm is, is more sort of well-developed. Mercury and Luna are both communication and expression and imagination and creativity. It's a, a well of resources for which we draw on uh, our subconscious for when we want to conjure fantasy. And notice that Mercury too is the finger of, as I've said, communication and expression. His message the strength of this message is strong. What he felt like he had to say was incredibly strong. The left hand shows us what's internal. It's what's within. So the fact that this is Mercury and Luna here is, is very sort of strong and well-developed. It's showing us there's a, a great strength here, a great desire to, to communicate his message across to the outside world. Luna is not only a place of imagination, it's a place of restlessness. And these are why travel lines that cut in from the side of the palm here are also restless lines. They are one and the same. And so it's a place of restlessness, which is why when we crave uh, travel, when we crave a little bit of fantasy, we are delving into a place of escapism. Now, as I've mentioned, a triangular sort of shaped palm, displaying fingers, uh, a high set thumb here as well, the long and sloping lines here. The, all these signs here suggest someone who is um, highly energetic and highly dynamic. Palm shape being triangular focuses its energy into Luna, certainly, but also it's wider at the top than it is the base. You know, it sort of slopes downwards. So we have a sort of funneling of energy in both Luna and at the top of the palm, the kind of emotional realm of the palm. And the two combined uh, here with uh, Walt means that he has an ability to uh, or at least he utilized his ability to draw on the imagination combined with his own emotional understanding. And I'm actually going to be paying more attention to the left hand here in this palm reading, partly because we have more information on uh, this print, but also because what's within is more important in this palm reading, partly because of what we already know about Walt Disney. Notice the girdle of Venus here. It's very strong. And it's it's well developed. And this, in combination with other things I've already pointed out in this reading, shows us a, a great emotional awareness. Before I move on, I should say that being a dynamic hand, being that uh, we have this kind of odd, irregular shape to the palm, it puts certain things out of balance. And I use that word quite a bit in my palm readings. Balance is, is key. So what's happening here is we have... Uh, a great sort of focus on the imagination, on the emotional realm here as well, uh, particularly in the right hand. So this is uh, causing um, physical imbalance. So what this means is we have a particular focus on the idealism, on the emotional sort of sensitivity and being dynamic, being energetic. This is someone who focuses a great deal of energy into um, something that might be unrealistic. As I've mentioned, fantasy is as high, obviously, um, a great ability to delve into this high amount of fantasy with this long sloping headline that forks at the end, extra perspectives. 
Uh, but what this also means is the odd shape of the hand here causing this lack of balance is there's a, a lack of constitution, a lack of immune function. And part of uh, the dynamic and energetic hand, um, part, part of the, the issue here with a dynamic hand is that they continue to work themselves into uh, some sort of health issue. And this is this is partly because they're, they're so morally driven, but so motivated by uh, belief that they drive themselves into the ground. That's not always the case, and it's not completely the case here. Uh, Walt Disney is certainly a mixture of dynamic and energetic. And I'm using these categories of um, describing the hand shape of the palms. That isn't all that well known. And that's because this this was created by uh, David Brandon Jones, a, an amazing palmist who is no longer with us, sadly. He was my mentor's mentor. He wrote several books. He probably was one of the best palmists in the world. However, uh, fairly unknown. Now, notice that uh, Jupiter is sort of set apart from the rest of the fingers. It's leaning towards the thumb. This is always a sign of uh, an individualist, someone who's um, going to do things their own way. It's, it's the sign of independent thinking. And the thumb as well, being very sort of high set, it's certainly showing someone who is, uh, it provides extra sort of ambition. and. Actually, it was not what I was expecting to see, to be completely honest. I was expecting to see somewhat of a low set thumb, a sign of a book lover and a humanitarian. But this is someone who's a little bit more self-involved, a little bit more self-concerned with their own thoughts and feelings. And I think this adds towards his almost sort of obsessive um, nature of his, his imagination and uh, in getting lost in his own thoughts. The headline here is very high up on Jupiter, and there's um, etchings here. There's there's sort of beginnings of the headline as it's joined at the lifeline, uh, reaching up towards Jupiter. So the, the headline itself is not completely um, beginning in Jupiter. It begins as one with the lifeline, and this, these are ambition lines, really. But the head and the lifeline as a whole begin high up on Jupiter. So not only is he highly ambitious, he is very able to lead by example. The width of the palm as well shows a good understanding of human nature, a good understanding of people and a good uh, people management skills. The strong and, and wide Jupiter finger at the uh, top as well, it shows a highly uh, spiritual nature. This is someone who is um, quite a fascinating example, actually, of a leader um, by example. I noticed that the second phalanges of all the fingers in general, apart from Mercury, appear to be uh, longest, and I believe this adds to his ability to um, this adds to logic and practicality. So thankfully, there's some balance here. Otherwise, if, if things were, if he didn't have some sense of how to utilize his high creativity, he'd be lost almost in unrealistic thoughts and expectations. I do think that the left and right hand show significant differences. And this for me is quite telling because it's showing that he it was a very different person within. Now look at the headline. It's it's quite fascinating because it's this is the sign of the tortoise in Tibetan palmistry. And his his lifeline and headline are joined for such a long time, he's very cautious, he's very shy. Uh, there's there's some lacking of confidence um in in some respects. I think he had low self worth. I think he outwardly showed quite an exuberant and confident, outgoing personality. The finger, as I say, they're very out, outsplayed. This shows a very sort of outgoing nature. But I think within, I think his own feelings about himself are, were quite actually uh, reduced. And I think he was a very cautious person. Notice the headline, as it breaks away from the lifeline at the age of around about 26 for this person, maybe even 27 
where he really started to carve his own independence as a person. Uh, it's, it reaches upwards and then downwards, and then it kind of slopes upwards again. Now, a waving kind of headline like this, it's, I wouldn't say it shows mental imbalance. I think what it shows is someone who is the potential for clinical depression because it's someone who is high one minute and low the next. And there doesn't seem to be any discernible reason for this, for this any external, obvious or internal reason. They at times felt very low and at times felt very high interchangeably uh, without cause or reason. I think living with Walt Disney as a partner would have been quite difficult. And I think his partner would likely have need to have had exceptional emotional awareness and intelligence and to have just been able to have provided him time and space as well as been able to have adapted to cleaning up after the, the chaos and whirlwind of uh, you know the wake that he left behind i imagine in in his work in his day-to-day -day livings i don't think he had much time for um you know the basics um this is the sort of man who probably would have left clothes lying around and you know washing up to be done he's just too busy in the whirlwind of his own imagination and work he threw himself into his work and dynamic hands energetic hands always do one thing I notice in particular in terms of difference between the left and right is the lifeline. Notice on the left hand here, it kind of cuts in quite narrowly towards the thumb here. It reduces the size of the venous mount. And this is, you know, on the right hand, it actually swings out a bit larger. It's a bit larger of a venous mount on the right hand. This is showing that, again, it's another sign of showing this exuberant outgoing personality whereas actually internally on the left hand here it's what's within we're seeing actually someone who is uh, somewhat more guarded conservative and shy i think he in some ways put on a, a mask for people to see in, in order to defend his own um insecurities notice the right hand uh, Jupiter's finger here is 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 leaning closer towards the thumb. It's I wouldn't say that Jupiter's leaning further away on the right hand, but I would say the thumb is leaning closer. Now this is certainly a sign of his need to change, to change the world around him, utilizing almost his. This is his one great strength here is his understanding is a, a great spiritual uh, yearning, a, a desire to learn and soak up and respond to um, his own spiritual understanding. And, and this is not something I was expecting to see, actually. And I think the way in which he changed the world around him was with his work by implementing his own very sort of unique uh, viewpoints of, of the world through his work. Now, one thing I find particularly interesting about Walt Disney's palms is, again, on his left hand, notice the headline here. There's a branch. As it sort of branches upwards and outwards, it seems to be stemming from Venus, the family sphere, the domestic sphere of friendships, love, a uh, place of warmth and character and spirit. And and this is where the headline kind of reaches upwards. And there's a small branch here that reaches towards outer Mars. But for the most part, the headline then decides to branch downwards. It strengthens as it does. And it forms a, a very creative arc into uh, the depth of Luna, where Luna begins to appear, you know, with this kind of great darkness of world development. And and you can see just how well developed this um, is overdeveloped, to be, to be frank. And as the headline reaches into this area, it forks. And all of these things combined show someone who is um, looking to provide for their family, but also looking to uh, utilize their thoughts and feelings around uh, warmth, love and relationships in order to, uh, you know, it's connected with 
this um, creativity with the strength of imagination and with the ability to see things from more than one perspective this is known as the writer's fork it's seen in actors lawyers psychologists and of course writers and and uh, walt disney was was a writer certainly but more than that he was an artist and the one thing that i'm sort of missing in this palm reading here is a career line or a fate line a destiny line if you like and i would expect to see a fate line in an artist's hand certainly stem from luna and we do see we do see what i believe here is a fate line rising upwards from luna but as it does it sort of seems to stop at the headline there isn't much of an indication of any kind of career after this time and that in some respects would seem to suggest that um career has somehow been obstructed by some poor decision making but obviously we know that's not the case so i don't see in the right hand any uh, semblance of a fate line either now that's not to say that that has any real meaning any real sort of strength of meaning because i mean what i'm trying to say is i don't want to draw too much meaning on it because it it has been seen in you know the hands of millionaires and billionaires no fate line at all it is said that a lacking of a fate line is someone who carves their own career someone who potentially has no destiny and it's also said to be someone that's sort of coasting on or, or drifting perhaps one opportunity to the next with no real purpose and perhaps uh, walt disney had no real um understanding of where he was who was heading at the time that these these were taken no no real career prospects uh, although we know that in 1928 he was you know already highly successful and on the note of success success is seen in the apollo finger and it's also seen underneath in the form of vertical lines uh, commonly known as success lines or sun lines we see uh, one or two here and this is not the greatest of images but it's the best i could find they stem from the heart line and this is always a sign of um, artistic skill someone involved in some very sort of creative career so these two signs here uh, the fate line and the career line certainly hint at um, you know, the, the, a career of uh, some sort of creative industry. But I do wonder that if I'd seen his hands in real life, if I could have seen uh, that if he, if in fact, was an artist just by looking at his hands. It's unfortunate that these prints aren't all that good. Now, here's something very interesting because from what we know, Walt Disney had one relationship, one marriage in 1925 he married and this is that relationship right here and we can see it curved down slightly on the right hand practically speaking he was brought down by this relationship perhaps he felt um impact or nagged by his wife and i can see why just from looking at his hands and say this is not an easy man to live with but what is interesting is that he had more than one relationship which is not anywhere i can see documented because here we have in much later life a very strong uh, relationship line uh, an attachment line this is a very strong feeling about another person it begins with some sort of island here so we know that the beginning of this relationship is in some way tumultuous and this could have been someone that was kept in uh, out of sight and, um, and and perhaps this was an affair i don't know it's it's a tricky one with relationship lines or attachment lines as they're sometimes known as marriage lines because they don't always represent a romantic uh, relationship sometimes they are in fact business partners sometimes in fact they represent family members we go into business with although most of the time they do represent matters of the heart now i'm going to reveal a few things here that are contrary i think to uh, public opinion um, i think this is partly because 
the legend uh, that is now Walt Disney, which is an industrial sort of pop culture, um, is not really one and the same. It's, it's, it's a completely separate entity from the man we see in these hands here. And this is because such a high and uh, powerful um, and, and clubbed thumb here, as well as you know, a very tightly wound in lifeline on the left hand, as well as a very sort of dominating, um, controlling uh, Jupiter finger here. We actually, we don't see all of the hallmarks of someone who is uh, sensitive, caring, compassionate, and has uh, the best interests of others at heart. We don't see uh, the curved in, I mean, it's ever so slightly curved in, but Saturn is, you know, his sense of duty to others and the world around him is not um, considerate. Also, the heart line as well is actually quite confusing because at first I thought I saw a heart line here that was reaching right up in between, uh, almost onto the, well, it is onto the Jupiter mount itself. However, on closer inspection, what I think I see here is in fact uh, the girdle of Venus here branching up and acting as part of the heart line here. And the heart line itself is reaching just about in between to, uh, Saturn and Jupiter, it's certainly closer to Saturn. So he's, his interests are much more closely tied with the self. And, and what I do find interesting here is there, there is a disappointment here and it reaches towards the lifeline at the age of I'm going to say about 22. I mean, it's very hard really here to, to get it, you know, to accurately um, time events here, but it could be mid 20s. There's a great deal of disappointment here on, on the lifeline um, that the life becomes um, unhappy at this time. You know, from, from this disappointment, we see this rising ambition. We see, I think, you know, there's there's great feeling here on the left hand of, about what he wants, uh, his aspirations, um, and these these feelings, these ambitions are tied to uh, this disappointment. You know, early to mid twenties. Now, health wise, I do in fact see some issues here, and in part caused by uh, likely alcoholism here. Uh, notice on the left hand we have it's it's not the 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 best of mercury lines or health lines as they're sometimes known as I mean originally this was known as a liver line it's not going to tell you that much information about the liver but it sort of forms from a bit of a messy lifeline to Mercury lines seem to try to stem from this, and it's sort of, it's almost island-esque in its formation as it as it begins, and this is showing that uh, potentially health health issues are as a result of you know environmental and life's issues. Life, he's creating his own issues through overworking. On the right hand we see a slightly different story because the mercury lines are stronger and there's a, a an overlapping when we start to see the mercury line overlapping it's not altogether that bad it's not a, a sign of doom and gloom necessarily when we see a doubling of the mercury line it, it's it's showing uh, there's an awareness around our health there's a need to uh, be healthier for some reason so it's not an altogether great sign or a bad one. Uh, but what we do see is that the Mercury line is bending, it's waving a little bit. And this is a sign of um, deceit, a sign of a deceitful nature. Not altogether um, deceit in itself because we can't diagnose from one sign or symptom alone. And actually the Mercury finger is very well developed, very straight. So I do think what we see here is a, you know, what what you see is what you get type of guy. It's um so it's not necessarily 
that I think if we saw a crooked Mercury finger, then we could say, well, that's what you know partly this what this means. But the crooked Mercury line here is showing uh, there's a difficulty in the the nerve system is affected. We're not seeing the same sort of escape line or or, or you know toxicity line or physical. We're not seeing a physical addiction here towards alcohol. It's a psychological need. Uh, and this, again, is a, a compensation for a need to escape. And what's interesting is that the Mercury line cuts right through the lifeline. And, and it cuts right down low into Venus here. So the, the Mercury line here to me is suggesting this is a weakness that's developing by the wave. And where it looks to attempt to strike the lifeline is a, a potential omen of things to come. It's the, the palm is saying, be careful. If you don't change your ways, there's, there's potential health issues here in your 60s. And later on, at the age on the lifeline here, this is about the age of 60, mid-60s, whereas this is about 60. The fact that the Mercury line is not altogether broken, but it is, it's overlapping, and then it begins to bend, it waves, and as it does, it points upwards towards the heart line, uh, where we see an island on the heart line itself, and this is uh, always the place of uh, some sort of issue within the torso. Normally, actually... If you saw it more underneath the Mercury finger, it's normally it's more of a cardiac issue, but further, a little bit further over, over here, it's a long issue. So what we have here are the signs of the very vague dots here, and it would be very difficult to connect these dots and to certifiably say what's going to happen. And as I've said at the beginning of this reading, I would never say, um, you know, uh, present harmful information about a person's, um, you know, possibility of their death and when. Uh, it's just not something I would do. But for, th for the case of this case study, we can see here the clues of a uh, lung issue, health issue that's lung related. And it's striking the lifeline. It's cutting right through it, right into Venus, affecting this person's constitution. And it's likely that this person the way they lived their life uh, for many years and brought on these health issues themselves. It's likely that Walt Disney wasn't that altogether a nice person. I see here a bit of a temper, as I say, a very conservative nature. I think he had, I think he had friends. I think he was, uh, you know, showing himself as a, a friendly positive, outgoing, um, highly sort of energetic, you know, um, vibrant, colourful nature in the public. Uh, but I think actually who the man was is, is very different. We've got a very different picture here. And I've I've looked at lots of different signs here and I've tried weighing things up and being very impartial, but I can't help but see someone who is actually um, very, very controlling, uh, a very hot, explosive temper, and uh, very sort of dominating. Right. Someone who bulldozes his point of view, and um, and gets his opinion and his message across quite powerfully, quite effectively. Uh, but thankfully, luckily, because of, I can only assume luck really the people around him and circumstances he was able to manage his high amounts of creativity uh, a very un, you know constant unrealistic up and down thoughts were managed and uh, balanced by his ability to uh, carry out and you know, utilize his thoughts harvest them in a way that was productive and practical. He threw himself into his work, and as a result, in some ways, very slowly put himself into an early grave.
Let me know what your thoughts are on this palm reading. I would like to know if you've spotted anything that I haven't. Uh, sometimes that happens. Sometimes I've noticed some of you comment on things that I haven't picked up on. And I am always grateful to, to see and hear those things because, you know, more heads are better than one. And uh, we all bring our own uh, unique insights and perspectives uh, as palmists when reading palms. So I, I'm always grateful to hear your thoughts and opinions. Please subscribe. Please like. Maybe give this video a share if you thought this was interesting and insightful. And I will, as always, see you on the next one.